traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I want to start out the show today by looking at the Dow Jones last night. Uh, you'll notice here that we had this huge break from the high that we made here uh, on a Friday. Uh, we came down and we hit a 1.618 expansion of that move between Thursday and Friday. And then we had the move up here right before the open. And then the pullback here right at the 382. And, folks, when this thing exploded through here, uh, we actually had anticipation that that was going to happen. So we raised our stop uh, from where we were. We were our stop was way back up in here. So it moved our stop down a little bit. And as you can see, it went through the 618 and it went to the 786. And if you measured the A, B, C, D spot on, right at the exact 786 and backed off about 150 points from there. But the market is still relatively strong, even though the fact that we have Meta is down on the day and Apple was down on the day. So all of that is telling us that, my gosh, there might be some more strength left in this market. But I wanted to share with you some of the frustrations that I have as a, you know, a, a teacher, a mentor, uh, broadcaster, whatever you want to call me, you know, I try to show people that the patterns that I'm looking looking at. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That's the key to all of this. But I wanted to show you one that uh, there were two of them actually that were a little bit frustrating today. First of all, we got stopped out of our crude oil complex, uh, or <laughs> crude oil contract. At that, we lost 70 pips on that, but we picked up $1,100 uh, in the gold market and $1,100 in the S uh, now Dow Jones. And so the, those have been working relatively well. But the one I want to show you right here, because I spent a lot of time on the videos uh, over the weekend, you know, giving some ideas of where I think some of these things should go. And we had an absolute incredible setup in the soybean market. Now, this is the November soybean, which is the new crop soybeans. There's where we were on Friday. OK, we wanted to buy it. We wanted to see how the if there was a weather related thing where it would collapse. But it did not. It opened higher. Then it pulled back, okay, to the 61% retracement. But look what happened right here, folks. There was the easy money right there. It was at 382 right there. The risk was extremely small. Uh, it was also an easy buy right down in here also. But uh, that was a perfect 382. That one had 20 cents in it. So you're risking five cents to make a thousand dollars, two hundred fifty dollars to make a thousand dollars. Those are really nice. So you know, don't make money every day, but you try to make money most of the time. But the problem is, you don't know which ones are going to work and which ones aren't. I want to share with you another one that we were watching last night. This was really interesting because this had all of the earmarks of a really strong trending market that we're going to be talking about with a great deal of anticipation here on August the 2nd when we do our a live trading day. It'll be my last one for the year. Might even be my last one, folks, because I really get, I really feel that I'm getting into the area where uh, doing a regular radio show is getting a little tough on me, but I'd like to be able to you know, maintain the contacts that I've had at TFNN here and maybe be the roving cowboy where I can set in for people that are six. And with five people in there, six people, you know, I'd probably be in there a couple times a week. But that's not the that's not decision that I'm ready to make as of yet. It won't be made until the end of the year. I'm going to go through this end of this year, hopefully without uh, God willing, of course. But anyway, this is the Japanese yen. You'll see that the high up here was uh, right at the, it was a beautiful three drive pattern up there at 185.50. It never got there, folks. It got to 185.25, and then it's had the big drop down. This is what we were focusing on in the foreign currency situation of, of the video that we sent out on uh, Friday, because here's what we were waiting to see. Let me just get this up here. I got to do two things here. I'm trying to do them all at once, so it's not, uh, not too, uh, 
there it is. This is the one I want to see. Okay, here is the uh, picture of the dollar yen, dollar U.S. dollar versus a Japanese yen, and as you can see, the dollar is losing uh, to the yen here. But look, see, we, here's our here was our first A B C D pattern here a couple days ago. That was just absolute perfect ABCD right at the 61% retracement. Then we broke really hard, and then we rallied up on Friday. You see where we went in Friday? Okay, and that's where we opened here on Sunday night. We opened just exactly at the 382 right there. And look what's happened. Folks, we've fallen off the bottom of this chart already today. So that's the advantage of that 382. But the 382 has one other advantage that I'm going to share with you. Uh, by showing you some examples of uh, strong trending markets when we do our show on August the 2nd. There's, you know, folks, when I've been, when I've been doing this for so long, uh, it's what, 17 years now, I have met so many smart people. I mean, guys, it just absolutely blow me away. Many of them are, are guests that we have on here, but there's a lot of just private traders out there that share me little nuances of what they use. And uh, so a couple of them have showed me the same thing. They have no idea who each other is. One's in Alaska. The other one's down in Texas, uh, down in the Houston area. And uh, they show some things uh, with the 382 that I didn't even see. And so I'm going to be checking to make sure that I can share that information with them because I don't want to break any confidences, but that's what we want to be looking at. Okay, here's another one, folks. Here is the, the NASDAQ, folks. This market is no longer the leader of the pack. Uh, I know it's, uh, I don't know, don't know what's happened here, but uh, you'll see this is, the, this is where we were. There was the ABCD pattern, as you can see, on Friday. The market breaks down, makes a new low today. Matched the low right at the open, went right up to the 382, and we have not exceeded it as of yet. Now, that doesn't mean we can't, but we haven't done it as of yet. So that's what we're paying very, very close attention to uh, here today. So I, I hope that helps. These are some of the things I want to look at because I want to, I want to be able to show you uh, examples of why I think these things are working, and that's the main thing. Here's another one. We're talking about the dollar-yen. And the fact that the currencies were moving so fast, the, the amount of volatility that we had in the euro on Friday was highly predictive. There was a, there was a close on Friday right at the 78% level right there. And we said right in the video, we get a little above that. And look at this. It actually opened lower Sunday night and then took off. So when we got above that, boy, that told you that this was really in a powerful move, and it's already moved up about 40 pips from breaking out above the 78% level. So those are some of the ones that we were watching here today, along with the gold market. I think I did the gold market chart. I'm, if I didn't, I'm going to be a little upset, but we'll find out. I don't get upset too often, but occasionally I do. And I haven't done it yet, but let me show you the, the E-mini S&P today, though, folks. It's had some terrific moves. And if you don't think these guys out there with these algorithms don't use these numbers, think again. Look at this perfect Gartley, folks. You have a beautiful A. There's a look, you have an A, B, C, D right here. There's A, B, C, D, okay? And then you have a perfect Gartley to the downside. It drops 20-some handles, and then it's on its way up. It's amazing how they work. Let's take a break. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. We're going to take a look at the gold market, and we're also going to take a look at the, the uh, German DAX and also the crude oil market. Uh, as you can see here in the gold, we've made a beautiful ABCD pattern here over the last couple of days, right down there at that 1922 uh, uh, level. The low was uh, 1918. Uh, this now has uh, well over a $1,000 profit in it. So the way you handle that is you lock in at least $500 of it, and then let it go to see if it's going to make it. As you can see right now, we're setting right at this 61% retracement here in the gold. You'll see it right there. There it is, right on that spot right there. And if it gets starting to get above that, then you got the possibility of an ABCD, which would be a three-drive pattern. Well, that will take gold up another $15 or $20, maybe even $30. And that would be a really, really interesting one because that would be a three drive to a top pattern. And if should we get there and still long, that's when you stop and reverse. In other words, you get out of your long position and get right back in on the short side because these patterns repeat. You don't know which ones are going to work and which ones don't, but that's it. Here's the one I like the best, folks, and it didn't work. And the main reason is I had a very close stop on it. Eh, close enough for us because we don't like to risk a a lot in all these trades. Most of the time, uh, the biggest stop we have is usually a thousand dollars. That's when the you know the Nasdaq is going crazy, or the S and P, or crude oil. Uh, this time in crude oil, uh, we risked only uh, 70 pips. It wouldn't have made any difference. We'd have risked a thousand because it went higher. But you know we had seven days up. Unfortunately, it made a new high today, and of course it's reversed all of it, a uh, dollar a barrel, and that's probably the top now. Am I going to forget this? Absolutely not. The first thing I'm, I see, Johnny, yes, I know, Johnny's going to raise up the old 3A2. What I'm going to watch now, we've dropped a dollar a barrel since that new high was made at 74.15. Now, we had a stop at 74.82. So we, well, 84, excuse me, 73.82. <laughs> Seventy-three eighty-two was our stop. We sold it at seventy-three twenty-two. And so anyway, we're going to get that money back because all I'm going to do now 
is I know that I have a higher probability now that the top is in because this was eight days. This was nine days. Folks, it might go 10, 11, 12, 13 days up. I don't know. All I'm going to try to do is to find a pattern that allows me to trade it. Now, since we broke a dollar a barrel from here, I'll be watching for the first 382 retracement in the August crude oil. And that will usually be about 30, 40 pips. And if I can get that one off, then I know exactly my stop's above the high. And I have a really good chance for the market to go a great deal lower. All right? Okay, now let's move on and talk just a little bit about the German DAX because it's at a big, big pattern here. And it is heavily traded all across Europe. And we'll get this up here and you'll be able to see it here. There's the German DAX right there. And as you can see, it's a perfect A, B, C, D coming in right at a 61% retracement. Folks, this can't get any better than that. Well, it can, but they don't always tell us about it. But anyway, that's, that should tell us we should be getting a rally uh, here in the German DAX. And we still had a rally going in the S&P. No question about that animal, but that's, uh, that's what we're paying attention to uh, uh, right now. Okay? So this is what we're watching. I hope you pay uh, or can use some of this information. Now, remember, our guest tomorrow or today will be Mike Moore of More Analytics, Apollo Paula T. Douglas tomorrow, uh, Paula T. Webb tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, Stan Harley, Thursday is Jeff Hughes, and Friday will be Norm Winsky. And we've got a lot of things going on, which are really good. Now, after that action that we had on Friday, uh, the markets had a pretty good correction. The Dow Jones has got up to the 78% retracement of yesterday's high, the S&P 50% of that other high, and the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ, and this is the one that's really surprising, folks. Let's just see this again because this is all the NASDAQ's been able to do today. It's all it's been able to do, and that was early in the morning. It went right up. See, it came down, almost made a new low, and then right back up. Hit the 382 of that high right back here, the big high. And by golly, it's just not going anywhere right now. Now, if it closes really strong, up on the day about 50, 60 points, going to be a big, big difference. It's going to be a big, big difference. If that's telling you that you're going to be looking at something that is going to be, you know, pretty exciting uh, to watch. I've had a couple questions about the corn market, folks. The corn has been decimated, not decimated because that would be 10 times, but it's been hit really badly. And what we're doing now is we're waiting to see some type of an ABCD pattern within these uh, four-hour and 60-minute charts we've been looking at for the past 10 days. They, are, they have coming up, but they're lower than where we want to be right now. In other words, we think we can get prices a little bit lower based on what the corn is doing. Now, soybeans exploded to the upside and had a pretty big correction to the downside in perfect ABCD three drive to a bottom uh, fashion. We'll show that to you again because this was one that I missed. I, I bought some of it at the 382, but boy, that was easy, the easy money was right on the opening this morning or uh, late, late yesterday afternoon at four o'clock in the afternoon here when the, uh, excuse me, five o'clock in the afternoon here in Tucson when the uh, grains opened. And as you can see here, I wanted to buy them unchanged or better. Of course, they gapped up and really ran up quite a bit. And then they pulled right back to the 61% retracement. That was a good buy. And I, uh, unfortunately, I, I happened to be asleep when that one was on because it was early in the morning. But I did get this nice one here on the 382. This was a perfect 382, and uh, it gave me almost as much as the other one did. But I would like to make it on both of them, but I didn't because I was unprepared and there's nothing else that I can do. I want to show you something very unusual, folks. This is what's happening here with the NASDAQ versus the 10-year bond. This is We've never seen anything like this before. Frankly, I get this from Rich Anderson. I don't know what it means, but the fact that we've gone over this stuff for years and years, you can see the correlation, how high it is. Look what happened here. This was when the AI thing took off. These are the bonds. Okay, this is the NASDAQ. Boy, that's a really big divergence, folks. So we need to pay really close attention to that. That's why we're watching that dollar yen because it's really an important one to look at. The same reason that the euro was. You know, that's a, that's a main thing that when you're watching these things, you got to decide, you know, maybe something's happened that has changed the, the way they're gauging things. And that may, it may or may not be it. That I don't know. But I just look at the patterns, and those are the ones that I try to get to. And once I have those working for me, I have a pretty good idea of what we're watching. Folks, when Mark Douglas used to work here uh, 
well, he lived right down the street from me, but for six years. But uh, during that time, you know, we, we met every day, almost every Saturday and Sunday, too. We were always doing something as a family, all holidays. Paula made a beautiful spread, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, all of them were just absolutely wonderful. But we are in the midst of our, I have to switch, what I'm trying to get to is the monsoons, folks. We in the monsoon season, starting in June the 10th, it goes to September the 10th. This is the longest period. This is the 10th of July. We've gone one month without a drop of rain, and that has not happened in Tucson. Someone on the radio, on the TV uh, on Sunday said that hadn't happened since 1885. That's when they had the gunfight at the OK Corral, folks, over in Tombstone. Tombstone was twice the size of uh, Tucson back in 1885, and it was bigger than L.A. We'll be right back, folks. We got Mike Moore from our analytics coming up. Please stay tuned. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, with Mike Moore of More Analytics on the line. Mike, how are you doing today, my friend? Good. How are you, Larry? I'm glad to hear you. I'm okay. Better. Yes, yes. I had a couple of days off to clear up my laryngitis and stuff that I had, and uh, everything's good. We had such a drought here. We haven't had any rain here for six weeks. That's the first time it hadn't happened in 
about 120 years, so it's been uh, been very dry. But it'll be coming. We're not worried too much about it. it so anyway, tell us what where you, I live. <laughs> yeah, I know it rains all the time over there. You've had a deluge. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, Mike, uh, is the fact that we're uh, looking at a crude oil market. That, is it breaking out or is it a false breakout? Why don't you tell us what you're looking at? Because you told us it was going to rally. And by golly, it's certainly rallying. So tell us what you're looking at. Uh, sure. Let me just pull it up right here for a second. So <clears throat> the crude oil, we had a big break uh, just the other day. Let me just back up a little bit and kind of go back to where just give us some placement here. Uh, the, we've been bullish since the break above 65.31 like we talked about on the last um, – show we would run up on that rolled all the way back over and but that's still in place from the previous contract in the july and then the trade back above 68.25 warned of strength we've seen five dollars and 75 cents of that and then the trade above 70.79 also projects us upward four dollars and 35 cents we've only seen three dollars and 21 cents of that um, but if we fail back down through that below that decently that'll warrant a decent pressure so right here um you know, we've seen a break from back down in here, the break in here, and the break in here again, and we're still bullish. And after that big run up to um, on Friday, I expected some consolidation and maybe some pullback here before heading higher, but still overall bullish. Unless we were maybe to fail back down through this. This is a steep line in here, but I wouldn't give it a lot of credibility. It's kind of a strange drawing. Uh, nonetheless, it's going to come in at uh, 71, 74. Five as of this hour then move up uh, two ticks per hour if it breaks down below this lower line here though that's going to be uh, an additional sign of pressure and that comes in at 7018 um, minus 7018 minus one one tick per hour so that'll bring in decent uh, decent pressure as well Whoop. sorry what happened to my but in general, still bullish in there, and the other products are also bullish. You want to look at the RBOB and the heater? Have any questions oh, on yes, that? Oh, yes, yeah. Tell us, tell us your, guys. Yeah, your analysis is what's important. So you just tell us what you're watching, and we'll, we'll just follow along. Okay, so the unleaded gas is – well, first of all, the story should really be taken over to the, the cracks. Right? Um, the heat cracks been really been leading this charge up for the past number of days since we broke back above this line. Again, suggesting that if you were along the the heat instead of the crude, uh, could have made about, about another four grand per contract just in, wow. in three days. And then the gas crack also has just been rallied just the past two days, and now it's sort of consolidating. And then looking at the RBOB to heat spread, that's been in this big consolidation here. It's rolling over. It's failed back down through this, these lines right now. So that warns that the RBOB is going to be weak relative to the heat or the heat strong relative to the RBOB, uh, meaning that you, you'd rather be loaned the heat than the crude or the RBOB if this was going to run to the upside, if that makes sense. Yes, it That's does. That's kind of the power of looking at these other markets. And you can see that clearly in the heat, how much more it's given here over the past couple of days. The heat also broke above a significant formation – uh, well, it broke above this formation here, pulled all the way back, came to within 10 ticks of the stop here, and then kept going. And then it took out this higher formation, which also projects it higher. And that comes in at um, – that's going to come in at uh, 249.30 to 27 today. I'd said here that the trade above 237.85 has brought in 18.56 cents of strength. And then the trade above 249.36 to 37 projects this upward six cents minimum, 36 cents plus maximum. Um, and we've tamed 7.04 cents of that so far. So just got the minimum right there. We may pull back, and I, I still think this has a ways to go on the upside. If we fail back down through this line right here, um, again, which comes in at 249.30 to 27 today, a very shallow line, and that's going to warrant a renewed pressure. I would uh, just keep in mind that historically here, um, after the 22nd, there's often a pressure bias in the crude from 722 to 811. Um, 
although oddly enough, at the same time, the Heat's got a strength bias in that same kind of period in there. So just a side note. And did you want to take a look at the – by the way, do, do, most of your, um, do most of your viewers understand what 36 cents means in – No, you, you just in, assume, that, in, assume that they don't. That's the best way to oh, do it. So Okay, so – that would be like 3,600 times 0.42. Mm -hmm. That would be the that would be the equivalent of 15.12 crude dollars of a move. Wow, if that makes sense. Yeah, that would be the maximum. That's a big difference, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you want to look at the Brent or the gas oil? Or you want to jump to the? I'd like to see gas? Brent too because I haven't seen Brent in a long time. And there was one of the questions that we had for the day was, "Do you look at Brent?" And since you brought it up, why don't we look at Brent and see what it uh, see what it looks like? Yeah, I mean, you can see right here. This is um, you know this general area right in here. This whole consolidation area uh, we'd settled above here, popped up, and we're kind of rolling back down into it a little bit. But we've been bullish in the Brent. This is a back up here. Let's see, trade back above 76.22. Again, one's decent strength. We'd seen two dollars and forty cents of that. We'd broken above this formation right in here, and then we went right up in here into some exhaustion levels right in here and, and rolled over a bit. But I still think that this is poised for higher trade. The fact that it's failed back down through these, uh, not a good sign short term. But we'd really have to fail back down through this line before this thing. Uh, really starts coming off, and that line's going to come in at um, roughly 76.11 as of this hour. If you come down, we take out this formation. That's a major bearish formation, uh, and if we took that out, that's going to project this down at least $6. That's and the gas thing. oil, which is very similar to the heating oil, also was leading the upside along with the heat. Also broke above a bullish formation right here, which projected it higher. Um, I did warn of one exhaustion area, which is right here at 748.52, but we came to shy of that at 745.75, and we're rolling over a little bit. This has at attained its minimum projections to the upside, but has maximum projections that can blow this up through a lot of it. And this line right here comes in at 722 and a quarter to 722 even. Okay. You got any questions on that before I move to the natural? No, no, that that that's okay. uh, that's perfect. Yes, go ahead. So, oh, yeah. we, oh, we got to take it. Got to pay a few bills, Mike. Stay with us. Okay. We'll be right yep. back with Mike Moore, more analytics, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Mike Moore of More Analytics. Mike, uh, change subjects for just a minute. You you do an auto trading program, and I have three questions from uh, from a couple yes, of different people. And here is the question. The first one is, um, you put all of these trades in, in in batches. Is that correct? In other words, they're, they're part of a group. But it's their own account, and that's a batch order that goes in, and they're all filled at, uh, at the prices, and then they're allocated to the account. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, second question is, what are the fees for doing the auto trading program? Uh, they're 300 a month, but it's billed quarterly, so it's $900 a quarter. Okay, the third question is, uh, is there a risk parameter? In other words, if you started, say, with 50000 and it got down to ten, is there a place where you could say, hey, I've had enough, I don't want to do it anymore? Is, there, is that a, a, an option that someone asks if you could do that? Right. Yes, but you'd really want to call uh, Bill Orlowski at BTR Futures and okay. uh, get in touch with him. I can give you his number in a second here. Uh, I had it on here, but uh, it's eight four seven something. It's on auto dial for me, so I. <laughs> All right. Give me one second. I should have it. Eight two three four, nineteen eighty nine. Eight four seven two three four. 1989, I believe, is the number that I have. Right, and the uh, the area code is 847. 847, yeah, that's a cell number in uh, Chicago. So that's it. Why don't you go on and talk to us about uh, one of the other markets that you're following closely? Okay. The S&P is um, a good one. So the natural gas, gas here. That's a, that's a really good one, yes. Yeah. Well, the natural, we had, we had let me just back up a little bit here just to give some <clears throat> perspective. Okay, so I warned we were likely in the last stretch of the move up from 224.40 with possible exhaustion at 294.10. We talked about that in the last show. We came right up here. We just uh, came shy of the exact exhaustion level by four ticks with a 239.60 high and have rolled over 400 ticks into a bearish correction uh, against the move up from the lows. Uh, we've come off here. We uh, we sort of took out this first, uh, the second exhaustion level, and we've rallied up a bit here. Um, so I think this is more of a corrective in nature, not a trending move. And if this resumes to the upside, then this could be the start of a whole new bull structure to the upside, especially if you take this line out just above here. Let me pull this back up for a sec. Um, yeah, that comes in at point, plus 0.7 of a tick per hour. That's going to come in right there at uh, around 274.50 and increase mm -hmm. about a tick per hour. So we break back above that. I think we're going to head right back up to these highs, 293.60, and then continue on with the whole new bull, bull structure out of here. And just as from a little bit 
larger time frame perspective here, you know, we've come down here. We've kind of rounded out these lows here. Um, these these highs have have been changing slope and changing slope. And this peak, uh, at least intraday, took out this peak, but uh, or not excuse, on a daily level, it took out that peak, but it did not break above it decently. So it just came shy of the decent penetration. Nonetheless, though, that high, whole dynamic suggests that this is probably a pullback and then the start to a new bull structure. Okay. You want to jump to the uh, financials or you want to have any questions yes, on those? Fin no, financials is next. That's great. Oh, Let's wait, go to one last thing I wanted to show you. So one important spread to watch is the DC spread in crude. And last time we talked on the show, we broke them below this major formation, pulled back up to it and f rolled back over, attaining the minimum projections. Then when we took this out on the upside, that warned a renewed strength back up to this formation. And then we took this formation out. And one thing I did say is that if we fail back down through this formation, it was bearish. So although the outrights still look bullish in general, the fact that this failed suggests that these outrights might roll over a bit more before slash if resuming higher trade, if not fail their uh, formations above. So this is always a key spread to watch. What Even would be the what would be the trigger mechanism of that spread, uh, the D -S -D -S, What would what would it have to do for you to say yes, it's changed? Oh, it already changed this morning. It broke down below this formation a bit here at four hundred. Um, let me just pull up the analysis again. Um, but is that a bullish spread? In other words, when it breaks down, that means it's bullish. It's bearish if it breaks down there. So. Wow. That's the spread of the whole uh, front curve. So okay. it's you can see right here I had trade above three. Um, excuse me. What's that bell? You getting ready for Christmas? No, I'm telling you. That's uh, <laughs> just when you tell everybody you have a meeting for half an hour, they decide to call. Um, but here you can see here uh, we've attained 125 ticks, and then the trade above 397 projected this upward 220 ticks minimum, but we didn't see that. And I said, if we fail decently back below, look for decent pressure. So I think that this could come off back down to the, uh, you know, 326 area. But that's a warning for the outrights. All right. So let's hop to the financials, take a look at the S&Ps, which we rolled over into what looked like that bearish correction uh, that we talked about on the last show, I believe. Um, this whole structure... From here to from here up from 40, 62, 20, 40, 62 and a quarter, I had said that we were likely uh, coming, bringing that to completion. So I warned that. Uh, let me back up. I warned that this was likely the end of it if we took out this peak here. So I said I warned if we took out 44, 93, 75 and settled back below, this would warrant a pressure before resuming higher trade and could be possibly be a warning of an early termination of the move up from 40, 62 and a quarter and possible entry into a bearish correction. If so, the correction should exceed 125.5 points from the high and making the minimum target 43.72.75. So uh, when we've seen 82.5 of that 125.5 from the highs, I'm just looking at this a little bit more intently here. Um, you can see we'd failed back down through these highs here, right here, chopped sideways, and then rolled over, pulled back, and rolled over more. So our minimum target here is still down in here at a 43, um, whatever I said, 43.74 to quarter area. So I think this is probably still going to roll over and head down towards there at a minimum if this is a, a bona fide bearish correction. If not, and we blow these highs out and we keep taking them out, then I'd definitely be wary of this uh, exhaustion up here at 45.28 uh, to 45.33 and a half. Any questions on that before I go? No, that's great. Uh, we, oh, we oh one other thing. Couple. Yeah, I'd ahead. also said in the last uh, thing, we would left a medium-term bullish reversal below here, only rallied for these three days, and then when we left the gap lower here, that left a minor bearish reversal above here that also violated this. So those were also bearish uh, situations that added fuel to the downside. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, so gold, 
Yeah, finish your um, goal, please, because then we got a uh, break coming up. So, oh, so here comes the break anyway. Stay with us, okay. Mike. Stay with. I want to cover the gold when you come back. Okay. Okay, sounds good. We'll be right back, Mike Moore. More analytics, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, with Mike Moore and more analytics. And if you could continue on with the gold, appreciate it, Mike. Sure. Okay, just real quick as a backup. We've been talking about this for a number of weeks now that the main story in the gold here was that the solid trade below 2062.90 warned a solid pressure for days slash weeks. We've seen 162.3 of that so far. That was put on hold because we broke back above this uh, steep line right here. I, I break above 192090 minus two ticks per hour warned a renewed strength. We'd seen 20.2 of that strength right in here before rolling over and then held it right here on the low today. So we're in this consolidation phase. Let me come back up out of here and show it to you a little bit cleaner. We have a question, oh. too, when you finish with that. I have a question for one of our listeners. Sure. Um, question is, finish yep. that, please, and then I'll, then I'll ask the question. Go ahead. What's that? The question is, what do you mean by ticks per hour? That's what he's referring to. 
So a tick, per, a tick is the smallest increment that a commodity moves in whatever that commodity is. So one tick in crude oil would be uh, a cent, right? Because that moves in dollars and cents. Yeah, Ten dollars, yeah. Right. Or $10, I'm sorry, a $10 movement. But that's the smallest increment it would move in. And uh, the same thing with, you know, the S&P's moving, S&P MIDI's moving a quarter of a point. So that would be a tick in there. So tick is a generic term, but a, a it's an official term on the CME of the minimum movement of whatever that commodity may be. Does that make sense? Okay. Makes sense. I should say... Let me rephrase that. That is the the minimal capable move of the commodity. So, oh, I mean, well, I've seen well. natural gas where when it was trading $13, where it was yeah. ticking 50 to 100 tick increments. But the minimal it can, it can tick is a fraction of that. Yeah, Mike, we've sense? got to close up here because the show's coming to an end. We'll have you on again soon, okay? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mike Moore, more analytics, folks. We'll be back tomorrow. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.